You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob, and you're listening to episode number 356. Thank you for being with us. We appreciate that you'll spend a few minutes with us. We do appreciate it, and if you like the podcast, or if it's giving you some good information, go ahead and leave us a review on iTunes Please. or Stitcher, wherever you listen, or honestly, if you really want to help us out, give us a share and let someone else know that you listen to the podcast. We would greatly appreciate it. Absolutely. You race, Rob? No, I don't. You know, there's a big difference between just a Phantom and even a Solo, and a Solo to a Typhoon, and then all of those drones in comparison to racing. The more we talk about it, the more we experience it, they all have their pros and cons, right? And they do different things better than others, perhaps, it seems. But the question is, if you have a fleet of all these different drones, can this actually detract from your skill? Intuitively, I would sure think that it could, depending on what your uh, your ultimate goal is. It's true. Like if you trade options and then you go into long term trading strategies, could that kind of hurt your your strategy as a whole? Or kinda... Yeah, I mean, you really have to reset your thinking to make that kind of a transition, which is probably similar to what you'd have to do with, say, a racer that flies in a certain mode versus an Inspire that flies in different modes and accomplishes different things. Definitely. Well, and that leads us to today's question, which is brought to you by Legal Flyer. Are you a drone pilot? Are you operating under a Section 353 exemption? Then you may be familiar with Item 27, which requires you to get a property release for every flight over property. Legal Flyer is an app for iPhone and iPad that helps you create professional property releases in less time than it takes to do a pre-flight check. You can add your pilot info, you can sign in, hand it to the property owner for their signature. But wait a second. Legal Flyer's advanced integration automatically adds latitude, longitude, and even altitude. Then add a panorama straight from the app. Everything drops into a single page PDF you can share with a single tap. It's compliance at light speed. Visit LegalFlyer.com for more information or get it straight from the App Store. Legal Flyer, property releases for professional drone pilots. I'm wondering if learning to fly in rate mode is going to negatively affect my skills in flying my Inspire 1 in attitude mode. The paradigm just seems so much different. Brandon, thank you very much for the question. Um, actually, I got to admit, Paul, I've not heard about this rate mode. Well, rate mode is essentially, uh, let me put it to you very simply. Um, if we fly thank in you. attitude <laughs> mode with our Phantom 3, Phantom 4, Inspire 1, uh, this would be the same as stabilize on your 3DR stuff. Every time you move the stick forward, yeah. you get this instant pushback back to level. So if I pitch forward and the drone begins to pitch forward, as soon as I let the stick go, it goes back to level. Okay. Well, rate mode is the exact opposite of that. So if I pitch my, my stick forward, it's going to continue in that pitch forward until I physically put the pitch back and go back to level. Got so it. if I roll and I leave my roll there, it, it will continue to roll until I physically set it back to zero. So that's is it a, a mode that's designed for racing? Yes. Okay, because I you, could see where you'd... Because you're constantly adjusting your speed and letting go of sticks and going around kind of hitting the brakes a little bit so you'd want it to stay in the position you need it to be in. Yes. That, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. that it makes, totally okay. makes sense. But I think of this, and before I go in, before I go into my thoughts on this whole issue, it's something I've actually been talking to a lot with our intern and Nick Lang, mm -hmm. uh, one of the members here at DroneU. Uh, I kind of think of it like, uh, like video games. You know, if you practice and you get really good at Halo, you're probably not going to be like the super mastery level of, say, like Overwatch or um, I haven't played video games in so long. Call of Duty. Thank you. Really? Thank you, intern. <laughs> Who knows these things? <laughs> Young, youngster, teenager. <laughs> um, but there is no clear, defined evidence on whether or not it's going to help you or hurt you. Uh, I will say, and Nick Lang probably won't like this, but since Nick has been like uh, flying, racing, and everything, he's like, I think it makes me actually better as a pilot. 
I would say the evidence proves otherwise mm. in the nicest way possible, Nick. <laughs> you're my buddy. I love you, man. <laughs> like, but maybe yeah. just go back to the inspire. No. Well, you know, speaking of of those two disciplines, that makes sense when you're f- when you're racing. Just the intensity of that, the very very quick short movements relative to the cinematic smoothness that you're looking for in videography and yeah. cinematography. I don't see how they couldn't impact each other negatively. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. You know, one, you're trying to go as slow as possible so people don't get dizzy watching your video and you mm-hmm. can sell it to really expensive production houses. On the opposite end of that spectrum, you have racing where it's woo, 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 as fast as you can. Like, right. you know, so yeah, I do think it negatively impacts um, your flying. And I will say this, you know, in our courses, And in the book that's coming out, in my book that's coming out, uh, we say, you know, if you really want to be the best drone pilot, if you really want to have that job security, the thing that you have to do is become a really good pilot when it comes to video. It is the most difficult thing to do. Aerial photos is a cakewalk. We all know it. You can go to Best Buy, buy a drone, put it up in the sky and take pictures. It's not really that hard. What's really hard is getting smooth cinematic video that tells a story from the start of the shot to the end of the shot. That being said, I don't know where I was going with this. That being said, they are two very different things. I'm just going to leave it at that. Well, so one one of the things that you had said earlier in starting off the podcast is that there's not a lot of evidence necessarily uh, with regards to answering this question. But I think intuitively you would probably say that it could negatively affect flying is inspire one yes and i remember where i was going with this point is that if you become the best at video and you take time away from that even if i take time away from that it negatively affects my skills so now if i'm taking time away from that and honing my skills on something else i feel like i'm further pulling away from my good videography skills and this is actually something that i have really thought hard about because the one thing that I have and that I can sell myself on is my ability to fly. Right. And if I screw that up, it's my ability to fly and film. If I screw that up, no more job. Yeah, I mean, so the adage, jack of all trades, master of none, right? I mean, that is, it's based in reality. It's based in truth. That if you spread yourself too thin in terms of the disciplines that you're learning and that you're trying to master, the less you're going to actually master. You know, it's funny. You never hear people say the latter half of that saying. It's always, oh, the jack of all trades. In a positive sense. Master of none. Right. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> no one ever says that yeah, to you in the store. You know, and, and I think it definitely is good. I mean, I could also see the flip side of this. It's kind of maybe approach it from that perspective as well, where you're just, I don't know. The more that you fly, the better you're going to be at flying, even if that's learning different disciplines. So, I, I mean, I can kind of see both ways. But I think in the end, if you want to be really good at one, flying in the other way is probably going to detract from getting good. I agree. On that bombshell, thank you for that question, uh, Brendan. It's a good one. If you've got a business-related question, FPV-related question, or a Phantom or a Solo-related question, no matter what it is, we're here to answer your drone questions. So, Paul... We don't get a lot of business questions. No, we don't. And we would love to answer the business questions for you. So can you give a couple of examples of what a business type question sounds like? What's the best state to open an LLC in? Okay. Um, that's something that I think about all the time because uh, I've, you know, people all over Facebook are like, how come Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton have the same address in Delaware? Because it's a tax haven, duh. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's not a stupid thing, but realistically as a drone company, where can I set up my company Mm -hmm. to have the least amount of tax and liability, right? Okay. Uh, Next, And that's a deep business question. That's a complex business question. This is how my mind (laughs) goes, okay? Um, My next one would be, and this is something we've actually answered in the past, but what is the best insurance company for drones? Because there's a lot of, you know, magic tricks going on, and there's very little... um, there's very little talk about what is the real way to get good insurance that works and that you can ensure that if you have a claim, 
it's going to be paid out because there are a lot of insurance companies that write finite details into their policies where you're not covered. And I give the example of flying indoors. Mm -hmm. And I also give the example of, um, because Costello Insurance doesn't let you fly indoors. Um, I give the example of, you know, if it says in your policy that you have to follow FAA guidelines, Mm -hmm. that's something that we don't have in our policy. Um, But again, it's something that, you know, you really have to think uh, long and deep about. Another thing, that, uh, another business question mm-hmm. that I would love to hear answered by you mm-hmm. is if I'm amortizing the cost of my drone over a 12-month period, right. uh, what is really the best way to account for that cost in my job costs on the jobs that I'm doing now? And then I think even the better question for that is what are all the things that I should be accounting for in my job costs? Because most people break it down, and Jeff Foster did this, he was like, you know, opportunity costs, what's the time I'm spending versus what I'm losing? Uh, you know, what's actually going into it? Are there any material costs? And uh, there was like a couple other things. I think he mentioned seven things. But for, m- for me, I'm like, okay, if I want to buy a drone in the next year, I've got to take that into account into right. the price. Um, I've got to take into account my hourly time. I've got to take into my account any editing time, any outsourcing. Outsourcing could be animations. It could be titles. It could be special reveals. Do I have to pay for copyright-free music? You know, there's, there's a lot that goes into it. So my yeah. question would be is, you know, what type of costs should I be putting into all of my jobs? I mean, this is something that you and I have talked about, and it's right. something that I've kind of mastered on my own. But, but it I needs c- to be developed um, mm. yeah, in more detail. And another thing that comes to mind is just marketing-type questions. What I would tell everybody is that the more sort of driven down your question can be, and in, in especially in terms of like examples of maybe things you've tried or even things that you've heard, but the more specific the question, the easier it is for us to answer the question and in a meaningful way that's helpful. Yeah, but another great question is if I'm shooting real estate videography and there's a lot of competition in my area, how do I create that unfair competitive advantage? Right. Um, The unfair competitive advantage is something you would find on a business canvas. This is if you're going to an investor and showing them, you know, what makes you different. Um, You know, that question I think would be great. Like, you know, set up a local YouTube channel, set up some social media on your area's real estate. You know, you show people the real estate that's going on, but you're essentially creating an entertainment value for people looking at homes. I mean, go outside, go to Starbucks, go get lunch. What are people looking at on their phone? And I guarantee it's one of two things, Instagram or Facebook. Mm -hmm. At least if you're watching them for a minute, watch out. That's what they're going to see. So Mm -hmm. I think creating the unfair competitive advantage, I think another great business question would be, you know, should I take equity or should I give up equity for an investor in my company? Um, my answer would be no, but I know that if you're trying to become a big company like, uh, you know, like DJI, that you need initial funding to get things off the ground, just like this issues are going on with drone you, you know? So yeah, there's a lot of sub questions to a question like that. And generally there are a lot of sub questions to any question that comes in. Yeah. Particularly business related questions. I couldn't agree more. But, um, another question, how can I make my product more easy and convenient for people to consume? Mm-hmm. And I say that in the example of what we've talked about in the podcast last couple weeks, which is if I'm doing re- real estate videography, should I be able to do interior photography as well? Mm-hmm. Um, and, Yes, the answer is yes. Realtors like the one-stop shop. You'll get a lot more business that way. Um, but also, I think a great business question is, and this is something that Matt Neal, a drone you member, and I have been working on with someone here in Albuquerque. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you their name after the podcast. But um, he goes, you know, I know you've worked for X. I've worked for X, and I don't want to work for X anymore. They pay late. They always call you when they need you, and it's kind of like how I am in your office. Like, Rob, 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 I need you right now. <laughs> and, I, and I know you probably hate that, and by the way, thank you for being so patient with me. <laughs> um, all patient with each other. But, uh, but she, you know, when she calls, she expects you to answer, and she'll get snappy and pissed off and have an attitude with you if you do not call her back in 30 minutes. You know what? Life's too short. Exactly my <laughs> point. So we call, like, there are, you know, four different quadrants of clients that you could potentially have. Low maintenance, low profit. Low maintenance, high profit. High maintenance, low profit. High maintenance, high profit. Boom. Um, you know, yeah, boom. You no, always... no, no. You want low maintenance, high profit. That's <laughs> yeah. the boom. <laughs> I messed up the boom. Anyways, there's a list of questions that you guys could send in and we'll answer them. 
Yes. And by the way, this is the business savvy guy. That's why he has a CPA. Well, I, I, that's very kind of you, but the reality is talking it through together is very, very helpful and is going to be more beneficial to them. But we need you to ask the questions. Totally. But also, guys, we're really excited about some things that are coming out. I'm not going to talk about them, but one of them is something that I've been working on for about, what, two years or pretty much since we opened. And hopefully we get the first draft back soon. Very excited. It's a book. That's what I'm talking about. Anyway, we'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. watching. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of this podcast. We really couldn't do it without you. Again, if you have questions, go to askadroneu.com. I'm sure you're tired of hearing me ramble. So we will end this show there. Thank you so much, guys. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. We believe that videos, images, words, and sounds have the absolute power to inform, inspire, and entertain. We reject indecision, confusion, and vanity, for they work against the community. We are united under the virtues of safety and knowledge. We are a training community of learners and teachers who encourage and energize each other to achieve greatness. We are pilots, videographers, photographers, freelancers, business owners, enthusiasts, experts, and apprentices. We are creators. We are the Drone Youth.